Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, please rise.
Please be seated. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Dalhousie University Spring Convocation. My name is Kim Brooks. I'm Dalhousie's Acting Provost and Vice President Academic, and I'll be guiding us through today's ceremonies. I'll ask folks to please silence your phones, but there's no need to turn anything else off. We love screaming children. We love hearing you scream at your graduates, cheering, shouting, all of those sounds are fantastic. To begin, I'm gonna ask Elder Christmas to deliver the traditional Mi'kmaq welcome. Well, it's important. Good morning, my friends. Good morning. Good morning. You sound like you rehearsed. <laughs> <laughs> I have the honor of saying opening prayer and welcoming you to Mi'kma'ki. Uh, if I can ask you to stand. Kisu Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Mi'kma'ki, the home of the Mi'kmaq people. Some people say it's unseated. Well, it is, but you know. And I welcome each and every one of you, and I ask the Creator to watch over you for the whole time that you are here. Hopefully he'll take care of you when you go home, too, <laughs> when you get home. <laughs> but welcome. Thank you very much, and I hope everybody has a, a beautiful day. And thank you once again, and welcome. Dalhousie University is located in Mi'kma'ki, the ancestral and, as I say it, at least unceded territory of the Lanuk. We are all treaty people. There are three key components to this statement. The first is the acknowledgement that the land Dalhousie sits on is part of Mi'kma'ki, the territory of the Lanuk. The second is the acknowledgement of the territory as both ancestral and unceded, recognizing that the peace and friendship treaty signed between the British Crown and the Mi'kmaq did not involve surrender of land. Finally, we are all treaty people, reflects that the peace and friendship treaties apply to all parties involved, indigenous and settler alike. At Dalhousie, we continue to work on and build from these critically important relationships and friendships, and we remain committed to the recommendations of the Truth and Reconciliation Report. We recognize that African Nova Scotians are a distinct people whose histories, legacies, and contributions have enriched that part of Mi'kma'ki known as Nova Scotia for over 400 years. African Nova Scotians came to the province through enslavement or through fleeing enslavement elsewhere. Having resided in the region for over 400 years, African Nova Scotian contributions to Nova Scotia and Canada began over 150 years before Canada became a country. We're thankful to the Indigenous and African Nova Scotian faculty members, staff, students, administrators, and elders who partner with us in developing and enhancing pathways, programs, and admissions guidelines, curriculum, welcoming spaces, and community partnerships. We know that we have much more to do to transform our colonial past into a future of inclusive excellence. Tina Turner, died about two weeks ago, and I think we should talk about her. Why not? Every major news outlet across political leanings and continents is still publishing tributes and stories about her, which says something about the way she resonates around the world. 
Some of the graduating class were probably born in 2000, <laughs> the year Turner retired. That may mean you have not discovered the great Tina Turner in a way that is to be desired at this stage in your education. What? <laughs> Tina Turner should be essential reading in everyone's first year. Regardless, this is a good news story. You have a world of joy ahead of you. I am telling you and treat this advice like it is urgent. After this ceremony, go home or to your hotel, put on some high quality headphones and let not Bush city limits play at a volume level that would horrify your parents. A solid 10. Not Bush city limits is a song about Tina Turner, then Anna Mae Bullock's hometown, a church house, gin house, a schoolhouse outhouse. On highway number 19, the people keep the city clean. They call it Nutbush. The song is spectacular. Using vivid but simple detail, Turner paints a picture of Nutbush. 25 was the speed limit, motorcycle not allowed in it. You go to the store on Fridays, you go to church on Sundays. They call it Nutbush. She doesn't need to tell you the town was poor, or that people got up in each other's business, <laughs> or, or that life in Nutbush didn't support finishing high school for many kids. The line, quote, no whiskey for sale, end quote, is brilliant. Four words say so much. Not no whiskey, of course, just not for sale. <laughs> when you listen to the lyrics of Nutbush City Limits, the town crawls under your skin and you feel like Tina sees and honors it. Reports suggest that Tina rarely returned to Nutbush and without telling you why, the song tells you why. From inauspicious beginnings, Tina built a legacy. She was the first artist to have a top 40 hit in seven consecutive decades. She was the first black artist and the first female on the cover of Rolling Stone. She has 12 Grammy Awards and she sold over 100 million records. And she has a Barbie in her likeness. But if you rewind a little, you'll find some harder stuff. Tina's paid musical career began when she hooked up with Ike Turner at 17, a man she would later marry. Ike gave, or perhaps imposed, the name Tina, and he trademarked that name so that he would own it and could replace Tina if she ever left what he understood to be his band. And while their musical careers as Ike and Tina Turner exploded, their relationship deteriorated, Ike had a cocaine addiction which eventually killed him, and he was controlling and emotionally and physically abusive. Tina left Ike in 1978 with, as the Guardian reports, just two cars and the rights to her stage name. After that, she released seven studio albums, including Private Dancer, which the Los Angeles Times reviewed, describing Tina's voice as one that, quote, melts vinyl, end quote. What does this have to do with graduating from Dalhousie <laughs> with a degree from our Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences? It has this to do with it. That's like a reference to what does love have to do with it? You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm surprised I had to say that out loud for the English students. In 2019, the New York Times published a retrospective on Tina accompanied by beautiful photography and you should read it, but not while listening to Nutbush City Limits at volume 10 because nobody can multitask. In that New York Times retrospective, Tina says, I had a terrible life, I just kept going. You just keep going and you hope that something will come. And something, of course, did come. In spite of having had a hard life, one that begins inauspiciously and that weaves its way through periods of isolation, poverty, illness, and violence, Tina's story emerges in ways not unlike all of our lives. With her relentless commitment to work, her outrageous energy, and her passion for music came the legacy for which we will remember her. And this is what I hope for you as we sit here, not at the beginning of your life, which is how we sometimes frame people after your university studies, but already well into the middle of it. You will have hard times. Indeed, you already have. You have traversed and are still traversing a global pandemic and what will be its long tail. But as a salve and hopefully inspiration, crank some Tina Turner. She doesn't tell lies about what is, but she promises us that there will be great moments, extraordinary moments, and that good things are possible, and today is one of those good things. Take a moment to soak in what you have accomplished in your time with us at Dalhousie. It is remarkable that you are here. Luxuriate while we stop the clock to recognize your accomplishments and see you for the beautiful and talented rock stars that you are.
As we proceed with the presentation of diplomas and degrees, please feel throw, three, blah, 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 and then also meh. <laughs> it's two languages, too. <laughs> There's no need to be too formal. You can use hashtag Dalgrad if you want to post uh, your photographs on Twitter. And this is being recorded, so I can hear about how badly I made my way through that last paragraph. <laughs> You can watch it again, and for those of you who have friends and family watching at home, give them a wave. All right, I'm going to take a moment to introduce a few people who will be participating in the ceremony over the course of today. You've already met Elder Christmas, who gave the traditional Mi'kmaq welcome. <laughs> Scott Bryson, our Chancellor. <laughs> Dr. Frank Harvey, our Acting President and Vice Chancellor. Dr. Jamie Bluestein, the Vice Chair of Senate. Cassandra Dorrington, Vice Chair of our Board of Governors. Dr. Jennifer Andrews, Dean of the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences. Dr. Estelle Joubert, Assistant Dean of the Faculty of Graduate Studies. Dr. Tom Yu, recipient of the President's Research Excellence Award and University Beadle and Brad Barton, our honorary degree recipient. I'll ask the front row to please take their seats and I'll ask the next three rows to please stand as well as any faculty and staff in the audience. These are the people who have passed you Kleenexes, sometimes virtually, and who have cheered on your successes. I give you the faculty and staff. It's now my great pleasure to introduce the Acting President and Vice Chancellor of Dalhousie University, Dr. Frank Harvey, who will give some welcome remarks. Chancellor Scott Bryson, VP Academic and Provost Kim Brooks. Kim, thank you very much for this. I want you all to imagine having to follow Kim for 19 convocations. <laughs> Elder Tom Christmas, thank you so much for that beautiful Mi'kmaq welcome. <laughs> Dean Jennifer Andrews, family and friends, members of the academic procession, and of course, our graduates. It is such an honor for me to be serving as Dalhousie's acting president and vice chancellor and to be here today to celebrate our FAS graduation with you. I want to acknowledge before I begin that we are all deeply saddened and remain concerned about the impact of the fires in Tantallon and Hammonds Plains and Shelburne and other areas of the province. We are very hopeful the rain over the past few days uh, will help and we know some of the evacuation orders are being rescinded. Um, I know I speak on behalf of everyone here uh, when I say that our thoughts are with the families who've been forced to evacuate their homes, including many members of our Dow community. I suspect they will continue to face significant challenges and hardships as they return. Uh, we've reached out to our students, our faculty, our staff to help facilitate supports and accommodations for individuals who've been affected, and we, of course, will continue to monitor the situation to see where we can offer further assistance. <clears throat> to our graduates today, congratulations. I suspect uh, many of you are processing a range of very different emotions today. For some, sadness at leaving Dalhousie and Halifax and many close friends. For others, joy at leaving Dalhousie and Halifax <laughs> and many close friends to begin a new job, maybe a new program. Possibly a little anxiety for those who aren't quite sure what's next. Don't worry, you've got this, and I'll work through some of the reasons why in a moment. And all of you, I am sure, are feeling immense gratitude for having so many amazing people in your lives who've supported you along the way, many here today. 
But if you are processing different emotions today, I hope you're feeling immense pride. And I'd like to view, uh, review some of the reasons <clears throat> why you should be proud, uh, why your very hard work deserves to be acknowledged and celebrated, and why we are so incredibly proud of you. And I'll start by working my way through a few numbers that I typically like to share with parents and family members who may not know the details of what you've been through. You spent hundreds of hours in classes <clears throat> and seminars and tutorials. You've read thousands of pages from classic books and texts and journal articles and research reports. You've written and studied hundreds of pages of notes extracted from those classes and books. You've completed hundreds of quizzes and midterms and final exams. You've drafted hundreds of pages of essays and reports and other projects. You've practiced and delivered dozens of presentations in person and online. Some of you participated in the production of amazing theater and music performances, explored <clears throat> new cultures and languages, engaged with local groups and organizations through community service, you earned valuable work experience through experiential learning opportunities and internships, and you found time to be student leaders in societies, athletics, extracurricular activities. And what has your liberal arts education provided as a direct consequence of the enormous time and effort you've invested <clears throat> over the last four to five years and the additional years that some of you, <clears throat> excuse me, have invested in completing your graduate programs. What have you accomplished with a liberal arts degree beyond the essential foundational knowledge you've acquired by completing those degrees in classics, creative writing, English, environmental, environment, sustainability, society, French, gender and women's studies, law, justice and society, history, music, theater, philosophy, political science, sociology and social anthropology. What has your liberal arts education provided? You've obviously acquired very strong critical, creative thinking and analytical skills to analyze complex issues, evaluate competing arguments, insights and theories, identify, understand and synthesize facts and patterns and trends, explore problems and solutions from multiple perspectives, draw logical conclusions from your research and your findings, you have deeply reflective reading and information literacy skills, very strong research skills to evaluate and synthesize relevant information from academic and non-academic sources, examine inter and interpret data, apply qualitative and quantitative analysis. You have strong written, verbal, and interpersonal communication skills to clearly and persuasively articulate your thoughts and respectfully defend your position and your arguments. Fast students understand inter interdisciplinarity by virtue of the programs and degree requirements that they complete, requiring students to, to explore diverse subjects, integrate knowledge from various sources and disciplines. You've acquired a deep sensitivity to and appreciation for different cultures, societies, historical contexts, improved your cross-cultural communication skills, developed global perspectives and an understanding of diverse cultural environments. You've also acquired strong ethical reasoning skills. FAST programs absolutely compel students to address complex ethical issues, questions, dilemmas, and engage in competing moral choices, perspectives, and principles, which certainly help to exercise independent judgment and ethical decision making. And I am certain after completing your degrees, you have considerably more self-confidence and self-understanding. Why is all of this important? I'll offer two reasons. There are many, many more, but I only have a few minutes. First, a quote from Steve Jobs. Bear with me, bear with me. <laughs> quote, it's in Apple's DNA that technology alone is not enough. It's technology married with the liberal, liberal arts, married with humanities that yields the results that make our hearts sing. Smartphones, iPads, 
in other tablets are essentially metal and glass slabs. It is the news, social commentary, essays, political and social analyses, and debates, literature, movies, images, access to different cultures and languages, blogs, performing arts, music videos, concerts, theater performances. In some, it is the wonderful, joyful, inspiring, moving, emotional, brilliant, digitized content that we all access on a daily basis that is so heavily grounded in the humanities, in the social sciences, and the performing arts, that bring these technologies, these slabs to life in ways that are truly meaningful, inspirational, motivational, and occasionally a little frightening. The second reason of many that your degrees are so important, I want you to consider for the moment the central puzzles challenges, dilemmas, crises, and priorities facing governments and corporations and NGOs and citizens today. The causes, consequences, and solutions to local, national, and global conflict, crisis, and war, negotiation, diplomacy, conflict resolution strategies, post-conflict reconstruction, reconciliation, and peace building, climate change, and the imperative to build sustainable and just global economies, and societies. With respect to climate change and environmental sustainability, FAST students understand the social, cultural, economic, and political dimensions of the climate change puzzle, policy dilemmas, and related impediments, strategies for sustainable development and conservation efforts, how to promote environmental justice, gender equality, race relations, discrimination, poverty, income disparities, promoting and protecting human rights, and social justice at the local, national, international levels. Policy failures, legal impediments, and possible solutions to systemic injustice, activism to protect vulnerable and marginalized populations, global health and well being, and the social determinants of health. FAST students are equipped to analyze public health policies, improve public health systems, address healthcare disparities, and encourage community based interventions. Implementing the recommendations from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. Strengthening partnerships with First Nations and Aboriginal pe peoples. Engaging with these communities and their traditional knowledges and advocating for the rights of indigenous communities. The, eth the ethical implications of emerging technologies on society. The risks and ethical dilemmas associated with artificial intelligence, including the risks AI poses for democratic institutions and elections. The list is endless, but these issues, debates, social dilemmas, challenges, and the core elements of the solutions are grounded in understanding people, cultures, societies, governments, policies, and barriers to progress, how and why humans interact. Progress on any of these challenges will be impossible in the absence of students, graduating from humanities, social science, and art, arts programs like the ones you've just completed. That's why you should feel pride today. And that's why we're so proud of you. But I also know that as you completed your respective degrees, you spent a good part of your time managing and balancing university commitments, work, family, and social lives, dealing with relationships, and social pressures, being away from family and friends, fears and anxieties about your program and your future student housing challenges, managing your budget, and in many cases, completing your degree while juggling one, two, possibly three jobs to cover tuition. And you had to do all of that while navigating a global pandemic, the transition to online and hybrid learning and the disorienting effects of that deep, deep sense of isolation. All of this required extraordinary and truly inspiring levels of resilience and perseverance and dedication. And I suspect many of you dealt with personal and emotional crisis and losses tied to the pandemic. Your graduation today captures in a single moment as you cross the stage the essence of your dedication, your capacity, your willingness to succeed anywhere, 
by applying the life lessons, the skills, the knowledge, the expertise, the passion, the resilience, and the life choices that you've lived through while completing your degree. These are some of the reasons we're celebrating today. These are some of the reasons your family, your friends, your profs, the entire platform party, by the way, the largest platform party of all the convocations so far. <laughs> These are the reasons our entire Dalhousie community is so incredibly proud of you. These are the reasons that you inspire us. So make some noise, congratulations. <laughs> Speaking of reasons to be proud of our graduates today, I'd like to take a, a second to single out one of our graduating students, Marie Jones. Can you lift your hand and wave so people know where you are? Thanks, Marie. Marie, att uh, Marie attended Dalhousie from 1969 to 1975, but she left Dal before completing her MA degree to take care of her son, David. She was in the process of completing her thesis when she left. Marie's family has 11 Dalhousie degrees in total. And she completed her grad degree with straight A's in all of her courses. Marie will be receiving her MA today at the age of 92. Almost done. <laughs> Convocation also signifies the transition from being a very successful student to becoming a Dal alumni, joining an international network of over 155,000 Dalhousie graduates who've gone on uh, to make a significant difference by serving communities, their communities around the world. As a university, we obviously take immense pride in the success of our graduates but we're also fully committed to becoming an even stronger university by building on our promises to our students, our faculty, our researchers, our communities, and our ongoing commitments to equity, diversity, and inclusion. Essentially, building on our legacy and building on our reputation so that the value of your degree, what it means to have a degree from Dalhousie continues to appreciate and expand and grow over time. That's our promise, that's our commitment to our alumni and to our graduating students today. So thank you for choosing Dow. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of your educational journey. Congratulations on this wonderful achievement. Enjoy this very special moment and please stay in touch. Congratulations. Thank you, President Harvey. Will graduates please rise? Chancellor Bryson, as Vice Chair of the Senate of Dalhousie University, I ask you to confer degrees on those candidates whose names have been approved by Senate. By virtue of the authority vested in me and in Dalhousie University, I admit to the respective degrees and diplomas with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto, those candidates who have fulfilled the requirements of that degree and whose names have been approved uh, by the Senate. Admito vos ad gratum. Hearty congratulations to each and every one of you from all of us. We're very proud of you. Now go out and make a difference. All the best.
graduates, please be seated. I'll now ask Dr. Jennifer Andrews, Dean, Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, and Dr. Estelle Joubert, Assistant Dean, Faculty of Graduate Studies, and Olivier Blais, an order and alum from the Fountain School of Performing Arts, to present the candidates who are here today receiving degrees. Chancellor Bryson, I am honored to present to you the following candidates on behalf of the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences who have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Diploma in Costume Studies. Lawrence Cote, Diploma in Costume Studies. <laughs> Chancellor Bryson, this concludes the presentation of candidates who are here today to receive the Diploma in Costume Studies. Chancellor Bryson, I am honored to present to you the following candidates on behalf of the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences who have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Bachelor of Arts. Olivia Rose Abbott, Bachelor of Arts, major in Sociology and Social Anthropology. Yomna Abd El Rahman, major in history. <laughs> Noor Ali, double major in history and political science. Justin Andrews, double major in environment, sustainability, society and sociology, and social anthropology. <laughs> Lucy Juliet Atkinson, major in law, justice, and society with distinction. Brooklyn Sophie Babcock, a double major in law, justice, and society, and history. <laughs> Farshad Bagheri, Bachelor of Arts. Haley Beatty, major in sociology and social anthropology. <laughs> Hannah Sarita Beaulieu, with honors in both history and political science, first class honors. <laughs> Renada Begoli, with honors in both political science and international development studies, first class honors. <laughs> Lily Ann Bernard, double major in philosophy and international development studies.
Cindy Sue Bergeron, double major in history and English with distinction. Ava Berry, major in International Development Studies. <laughs> Katie Grace Bizzo, major in Sociology and Social Anthropology. Josephine Kimberly Blankhorn, with honors in history, first class honors, university medal in history. <laughs> Bo Irwin Block, with honors in sociology, first class honors, university medal in sociology. Allison Kathleen Boone, a double major in English and History. Sarah June Bradbury, major in History. Simon Brotnitz, uh, major in history. <laughs> Lawrence George Brown, major in sociology and social anthropology with distinction. <laughs> Sister Angela Burnham, with honors in both classics and philosophy, first class honors. <laughs> Nigel Graham Burns, with honors in classics with distinction. Nathan James Callahan, major in political science. <laughs> Laurie Ann Chausse, Law, Justice, and Society. Caitlin Patricia Clark, major in political science. <laughs> Matthew Kelly Chevery, major in cinema and media studies. Grantham Robert Gareth Claude, a Bachelor of Arts major in History. <laughs> Caitlin Amy Marie Camo, with honors in both English and Creative Writing. Samuel Nicholas Cooper, with honors in theater, first class honors, university medal in theater. <laughs> Daniel Francis Robert Cove, major in law, justice, and society.
Jacoby Craig with honors in political science. Uh, Olivia Crawley, double major in cinema and media studies and creative writing with distinction. <laughs> Nathan Opoku Dankwa, major in political science. Uh, Cassandra Leah Davis, major in sociology and social anthropology. Double <laughs> major in political science and history. Tristan Jacqueline Deneen, double major in law, justice, and <laughs> Haley Ann Dollymont with honors in theater, first class honor. Edward James Elphick, major in political science. Uh, <laughs> Wolf. Vina Laura Erasmus, a major in history. Morgan Evans, with honors in international development studies, first class honors. Xiaoxin Fan, major in sociology and social anthropology. <laughs> Nicholas Battle Fisher, major in law, justice, and society. Christina Taylor Flood, a double major in law, justice, and society, and sociology and social anthropology. <laughs> Emily Dawn Foster, major in gender and women's studies. Uh, Lucy Jane Fox, a major in Gender and Women's Studies with Distinction, University Medal in Gender and Women's Studies. Uh, <laughs> Safi Veronica Friesen, double major in Environment, Sustainability and Society, and Sociology and Social Anthropology. Alexandra Grace Gadon, major in law, justice, and society, with distinction. <laughs> Sebastian Garcia Lavin, with honors in political science.
Olivia Marie Gardner, major in International Development Studies with distinction. Ella Jane Garnett, major in Law, Justice, and Society. Samantha Jo Goshen, major in Sociology and Social Anthropology with distinction. Sarah Noel Geerling, major in Law, Justice, and Society with distinction. Darcy Ann Gillespie, double major in Environment, Sustainability, and Society, and International Development Studies. <laughs> Sophia King Gillis, with honors in Law, Justice, and Society. Gabrielle Lily Gerard with honors in both theater and cinema and media studies, first class honors. <laughs> Nina Catherine Guevara, major in political science. Brandon Charles Hache with honors in English First Class Honors. <laughs> Mary Adriana Hanley, major in Spanish. Elizabeth B. Hanna, with honors in both Environment, Sustainability, and Society, and Philosophy, First Class Honors. Uh, <laughs> Carly Elizabeth Harris, major in Political Science. Uh, Raheem Anthony Henlin, Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Connor James Hicks, major in Sociology and Social Anthropology. <laughs> Elisa Mary Higgins, major in Law, Justice, and Society. Althea Neve Himmel, Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Rebecca May Holliday, major in Law, Justice, and Society with distinction. Sophie Rose Hollett, uh, major in political science with distinction. <laughs> Brianne Hopkins with honors in both philosophy and psychology. Connor Michael Hudson, major in Law, Justice, and Society. <laughs> Kaylee Lynn Hines, uh, major in Law, Justice, and Society. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Sanjeevan Elanko, double major in Environment, Sustainability and Society and Economics. <laughs> Leah Jenkins with Honors in History. Avery Elaine Johnson with honors in theater, first class honors. <laughs> Polly C. Johnson, Bachelor of Arts. Logan Frank Johnston, major in soci sociology and social anthropology. <laughs> Madison Taylor Kendall, with honors in theater. Haley Noel Kirk with honors in history. <laughs> Dylan Matthew Landry, major in sociology and social anthropology with distinction. <laughs> Joshua Anthony James Langston with honors in law, justice, and society. Elisa Pauline Lorette, a major in Law, Justice, and Society. <laughs> Cynthia Louise Leclerc, major in History with a Friend. <laughs> Abigail Paris Lefebvre, double major in Environment, Sustainability and Society in Sociology and Social Anthropology. <laughs> Pascal Demi Lego with honors in both Law, Justice and Society and History. First class honors. Shin Lee, major in sociology and social anthropology. <laughs> Simon Anthony Lopez, major in English. Francesca Isabella Lopez Privado, major in International Development Studies. <laughs> Charles Gilbert Graham Ludlow, major in Political Science. Kirsten Grace McDonald, major in Law, Justice, and Society. <laughs> Carissa Alessandra Judita Jobesi Lynch, major in Sociology and Social Anthropology with distinction. Todd James McDonald, major in Cinema and Media Studies. Hey, 
Liam Ronan McIsaac, Bachelor of Arts with Distinction. <laughs> Ali Ann Keith McMillan, double major in Sociology and Social Anthropology and International Development Studies. Maya McNabb, double major in sociology and social anthropology and environment, sustainability, and society with distinction. Andres Noel Margaret, major in sociology and social anthropology. Tess Catherine Martin with honors in theater, first class honors. Grace Jean Matadal, a double major in English and law, justice and society. Emily Alice McCarthy with honors in English, first class honors. <laughs> Kieran Shona McCullen with honors in law, justice, and society. Charlotte Jane McConkey, major in political science. <laughs> Neve McCormack, major in English. <laughs> Stuart McEachran, with honors and history. Rowan Curtis McInnes, double major in political science and international development studies. <laughs> Dustin Jermaine McDavish, double major in English and creative writing. Judith France Merrick, uh, with honors in history, first class honors. Sarah Taisa Marina Minkler, major in political science. Alexandra Maris Mines, uh, with honors in both environment, sustainability, and society and law, justice and society, cooperative program, first class honors, university medal in environment, sustainability, and society. <laughs> sustainability. There we go. Samuel Scott Moore, major in history. <laughs> Michaela Deborah Morgan, with honors in history. Lucas Morin, Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Crystal Kutessa Mutiabule, Major in Law, Justice, and Society.
Emily and Aida Nakerato with honors in theater first class honors. Denise Kanama and Lube, Social Anthropology and Society. Bridget Ann Norwood with honors in sociology with distinction. Ashley Victoria Nychuk, major in philosophy. <laughs> Gokcha On with honors in both cinema and media studies and psychology. Caitlin Joy Osborne, major in sociology and social anthropology. <laughs> Amy Madison Plechny, with honors in history, first class honors. Andrea Crawford Pelota, major in political science. <laughs> Christian Edward Payne, major in law, justice, and society. Sarah Jane Peavy, major in political science. Uh, <laughs> Ashley Ann Petrovsky, sociology and social anthropology. Siobhan Nicole Perry, major in sociology and social anthropology with distinction. <laughs> Jema Catherine Elizabeth Porter, major in international development studies. Kale David Power, major in sociology and social anthropology. Sarah Elizabeth Price, double major in political science and international development studies. Ryan Refuse with honors in theater, first class honors. <laughs> Emily Jane Ranson with honors in both theater and creative writing, first class honors. <laughs> Riley Aaron Reed with honors in theater. Morgan Rice, double major in international development studies and cinema and media studies.
Sarah Jane Richards, double major in environment, sustainability, and society and environmental science. Geneviève Hope Dragon Richer, with honors in both theater and cinema and media studies, first class honors, university medal in cinema studies. <laughs> Maddie Barbara Jane Robertson, major in political science. Emma Rochella Figueroa, major in law, justice, and society. Morgan Elizabeth Rolston, double major in international development studies and environment, sustainability, and society. Samantha Sandu, double major in environment, sustainability and society and sociology and social anthropology. <laughs> Anna Nadia Savage, with honors in both political science and sociology, first class honors. Angelo Savopoulos, uh, major in law, justice, and society. <laughs> Brooke Shadoka, with honors in law, justice, and society. Chris Sear, major in political science. <laughs> Sam Sedgwick, a double major in environment, sustainability, and society, and international development studies. <laughs> Ella. Adelisa Selimovic, major in sociology and social anthropology. <laughs> Shala Shamion Tahia, with honors in international development studies with distinction. Anna Campbell Shibali, major in classics with distinction. <laughs> Francesca Sofia Civilotti, major in law, justice, and society with distinction, Universal Me University Medal in law, justice, and society. Hannah Riley Smith, double major in law, justice and society, and political science. <laughs> Nick Sommerfeld, with honors in philosophy, first class honors. Jordy Edward Sumner with honors in sociology. <laughs> 
Sarah Ann Tanner, major in history. Marcus Alexander Taylor, major in Spanish, university medal in Spanish. <laughs> Hillary Ann Thompson, Bachelor of Arts. Adam Toprak, double major in political science and sociology and social anthropology. <laughs> Mackenzie Ann Tremblay, major in sociology and social anthropology. <laughs> Zachary Vincent Turbide, major in law, justice and society. Matthew Joshua Villela, double major in environment, sustainability, and society, and sociology and social anthropology. Florence Wallace, double major in Environment, Sustainability and Society and Gender and Women's Studies Cooperative Program. <laughs> Emma Grace Waney with Honors in History. Yuran Wang, major in economics. Did I go? Yeah, one second. Okay. I got you. Sissy Wang, double major in theater and economics. Sophie Jane Wynott, major in International Development Studies. <laughs> Sophia Eden Wilcott, uh, with honors in theater, first class honors. <laughs> Sophie Elizabeth Mary Wood, Bachelor of Arts with Distinction. <laughs> Jamie Roy Wood, Major in Law, Justice and Society. Gina Woodward with honors in theater, first class honors. <laughs> Rao Yao with honors in German, first class honors, university medal in German. Meredith Yar with honors in law, justice, and society, first class honors. <laughs> Ornella Zambo Kicho, major in law, justice, and society. Aiden Vincent Zan Roland, major in music with distinction.
Nadia Zain, major in cinema and media studies with distinction. <laughs> Kenneth Calvert Zeron, major in cinema and media studies. <laughs> Chancellor Bryson, this concludes the presentation of candidates who are here today to receive the Bachelor of Arts. <laughs> Chancellor Bryson, I'm honored to present to you the following candidates on behalf of the Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences who have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Bachelor of Music. Chloe Eva Johnston Zion. <laughs> Dylan McIntyre Hay with Distinction University Medal in Music. <laughs> Hussam Kawar. Hannah Rose Landry. <laughs> Madeleine Mason with distinction. <laughs> Tori Cameron Hayes Martin with distinction. Nicholas Gerard Purcell. <laughs> Dominic Rose Saulnier. <laughs> Christiana Tavitian with distinction. James Benjamin Thomas with distinction. <laughs> Chancellor Bryson, this concludes the presentation of candidates who are here today to receive the Bachelor of Music. Chancellor Bryson, I am honored to present to you on behalf of the Faculty of Graduate Studies the following candidates who have fulfilled the requirements for Master of Arts. <laughs> Maitrai Augustin, International Development Studies. Jacob Bolton, History. <laughs> Malisha Farzana, Social Anthropology. <laughs> Aiden Michael James Ingalls, Classics. From 1969 to 1975, Marie Jones attended Dalhousie University for her Master of Arts degree, but due to family circumstances, Marie did not graduate at that time. Today, 
48 years later, we are so pleased to award Marie with her degree, Marie Jones, Master of Arts. Alexander Richard Kennedy in history. Jorge Alejandro Lopez Brandt, musicology. Joan Shaw, Political Science. <laughs> Philomena Bardiwa Yeboa in French. Chancellor Bryson, this concludes the presentation of candidates who are here today to receive the Master of Arts. Chancellor Bryson. The degree of Doctor of Philosophy is the highest earned degree awarded by the, the university and, as such, represents the culmination of the candidate's educational achievement. I am pleased to present to you the following candidates who, through thesis and examination, have fulfilled the requirements for the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Chancellor Bryson. The awarding of the PhD degree completes a long cooperation between the student and their thesis advisor. We are pleased in the ceremony also to recognize the supervisor of the doctoral candidate, and we ask the supervisor to stand and present the parchment to the graduate following hooding. Following the, 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 the awarding of the degree, our newest PhD graduates are asked to join the faculty on stage. Shauna Jane Gunther in English, Supervisor William Barker. <laughs> Blessed be the FAP's early modern English medical representation. I do not have the following page, I apologize for the rest of the title of that degree. Oh, never mind, I have it here. Blessed be the Paps early modern English medical representation of women's breast, breast milk, and breastfeeding. <laughs> Dr. 
Jennifer Elizabeth McClatchy in Interdisciplinary Studies, Supervisors Roberta Barker and Karen Beasley. Small acts of care towards waste, weeds, and wastelands, an arts-based method for decolonizing settler relationship with land and tending to livable futures. Chancellor Bryson, this concludes the presentation of candidates who are here today to receive the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Since that concludes the period of the celebration where folks walk across the stage, let's thank Olivier Blais. All right, graduates, we've spent a while clapping for each of you. If you look at this side of the room and imagine the folks watching the live video cast who have spent time supporting you and cheering you on, this is your chance to say thank you to them. So please rise and offer them your warmest thank you. I I'm gonna try that again, your warmest thank you. I'm going to turn the microphone to the president. Conferring an honorary doctoral degree is the highest honor a university, nice timing, <laughs> <laughs> is the highest honor a university bestows. I now call upon Dr. Jamie Bluestein, Vice Chair of Senate, to present the candidate for the degree of Doctor of Laws, Honoris Causa. Brad Barton, will you please rise? Brad Barton's calling as an educator was evident from a very young age. He approached his career through the lens of the African Nova Scotian experience he knew firsthand, a lens sorely missing from his own education. Over the 60 years that followed his first venture into the classroom, few individuals can claim to have had a more positive impact on Nova Scotia's school system than Mr. Barton. His work has transformed the way this province's schools support African Nova Scotian learners and indeed all students. Mr. Barton's lifelong impact transcends the classroom through significant contributions to communities throughout Nova Scotia and beyond. Mr. Barton was born and raised in Jordantown, Digby County and attended a small rural segregated school. Upon finishing high school in 1963, he immediately returned to the classroom. He began teaching at Alan W. Evans Nelson Winder elementary school in North Preston before even completing his provincial certification. He then made his way to the Nova Scotia Teachers College where in 1964 he was part of the first class of graduates in physical education. This is where Mr. Barton first became involved with volleyball as an official, launching five decades of dedication to the sport which would prove nearly as inspirational and impactful as his teaching career. Mr. Barton's work to create a more equitable education experience for African Nova Scotian learners is considered by his colleagues and community to be foundational. Schulich School of Law professor Michelle Williams, one of Mr. Barton's nominators, wrote, quote, Mr. Barton initiated and acted on conversations across the province with leaders from all backgrounds around topics such as race relations, cross-cultural understanding, and human rights. 
He did this at a time when public and private institutions were struggling with addressing racism and discrimination, often alienating professionals who are passionate about addressing these topics in real progressive ways, unquote. She credits Mr. Barton's perseverance as paving the way for individuals like herself to work in educational settings and continue to champion African Nova Scotian students. Over the course of his more than 30 years in the education system, Mr. Barton has been a principal at the elementary, junior high, and high school levels. He has held several administrative positions throughout the school board, including supervisor of schools and supervisor and coordinator of race relations, cross-cultural education, and human rights. He is a lifetime member of the Canadian Educational Association has been a and has been a member of the Black Educators Association for nearly 50 years. Mr. Barton has been instrumental in creating and leading initiatives to increase accessibility and improve outcomes for African Nova Scotian learners, including the African Nova Scotian Student Support Worker Program, which is embedded in, the, in schools province-wide. And he is renowned for his efforts to improve access to post-secondary institutions for African Nova Scotians. Mr. Barton has also left a lasting legacy in the sporting world as a volleyball coach, official, and administrator. He officiated two Olympic Games, one Pan Am Games, three World Student Games, and a World Championship. He is the first black Canadian to become an internationally rated volleyball referee. He served as chair of the National Officials Committee for the Canadian Volleyball Association, the Atlantic representative for the International Officials Committee of Volleyball Canada, and is a lifetime member of Volleyball Canada. In addition to his contributions to education and sport, Mr. Barton has also volunteered for the Nova Scotia Police Review Board, the Advisory Board of Community Colleges and Universities, and the Jordantown Acacia Conway Betterment Association. He was inducted into the Nova Scotia Sport Hall of Fame in 2017. He is the recipient of both the Queen Elizabeth II Gold and Diamond Jubilee Medals, the Marjorie Turner Bailey Athletic Achievement Award, the Air Canada Canadian Amateur Sports Award, and has been honored with both the Order of Nova Scotia and the Order of Canada. Today, we are proud to add this honorary degree to his impressive list of accolades. In recognition of his tremendous impact on education outcomes for generations of black and African Nova Scotian students, and for his contributions to sport in the province nationally and internationally, I ask you, Chancellor, in the name of the Senate, to bestow upon Brad Barton the degree of laws, honoris causa. Get to it. I'll get to it. Now, <clears throat> Brad Barton, by virtue of the authority vested in me and in Dalhousie University, I, I admit you to the degree of Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa with all the rights, privileges, and responsibilities appertaining thereto. Congratulations, Dr. Barton. Well done. Well done. Hell, you don't even look 60. Huh? I, uh, <clears throat> excuse me. I was contemplating what I would say at the beginning, and after listening to what was read, I can't really say anything more except thank you very much for honoring me 
uh, the positions that you have. Uh, I will say that I will do everything I possibly can to continue with my work, but also looking forward to the younger people to take over. I'm changing what I have here for a minute because I want to make sure I say to you, as graduates of uh, Dalhousie University, think about the things that I did when I was your age. That's one of the things I wanted to mention to you. If I was able to do it coming from a segregated community of Jordantown, and we look at rural Nova Scotia, rural Canada, even though they may not be from the African Nova Scotian community, they are also segregated in some cases. Maybe some of you just came from a, a, a area in Nova Scotia or, or also across Canada of uh, being the only ones that you know are the ones that live in your community. So I think segregation goes on both sides. And my message is that we must learn that the difference is is the visibility of us, people of color. And so I leave with you as a message to ensure that you actually do something with what's happening in the world today. It's very difficult for us, people of color, to go even back to uh, Myrtle Beach where I go down and play golf every year up until about three years ago. You never know what can be said, what happened today. Back in the day, people wouldn't say the things that they say, but this, now people will say anything or do anything. You, as your generation, must do what we did when I was your age. Take up the flag and push forward to make sure that all people will be recognized by uh, the others in a positive way as opposed to something of, of being rebellious in relationship to what we do. So that's part of my message. But I also want to say I don't want you to think you have to do what I did. I was lucky. I had a beautiful wife who, while I was gone, took care of the family and, and also supported me all the way through. So what you do is take whatever the thoughts you may have in your mind, what you want to do, do it while you're young. Uh, polish up on it as you get older. Relax when you get to the age you want to pass the torch, and that's why I am today. So uh, there are so many other things I wanted to say, but I just wanted to say when I first got the call, uh, I was excited, elated. Then I was told that you uh, have to speak. <laughs> I was hoping that I, really, to be honest with you, I was hoping that I would say uh, that was one small few words. But when I found out that, and then she said, you have to do it in 10 minutes. Now that is the challenge, because regardless of who you are, how many years you would put into whatever you're doing, 10 minutes is not that long. So I wanted this to reemphasize a couple of things. And somebody, I didn't ask anybody from the family to tie me, but I know they are. <laughs> because I can talk a long way because I had so many different experiences. But what I'm calling in on today is my experience as a volleyball referee. In the years back in the day when you were young, and even when you matured, you gained a reputation. But I always knew when I first started the match, I had a crowd's plus in front of me as spectators. I, I was always nervous and psyched up, but I always had to take time myself, by myself to get myself pumped up. I didn't have time for that today because they were so good to me and took me around this morning from one place to another. I have to congratulate Dalhousie's organization for giving me all the attention that they did. 
Uh, I've never been treated, even though I've been in all, a number of countries. And when you go to one of those countries representing Canada, you are treated with distinction. You are treated with a, 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 a plain clothes police person walking with you everywhere you go. But I never got the same treatment as I got today at Dalhousie. I mean, it's amazing. Uh, so, I think one of my brother-in-laws said, don't talk too long. <laughs> um, and I, I was also uh, given a send-off last night by about 15 people. And they just told me, just go and do what you gotta do, say what you gotta say, and then get off the stage. <laughs> so, and I look at them now and look them to the down there laughing. I, I also have to mention my son, Jason, my daughter, Leslie, and my sister, Violet. She's the elder now of the, of the family. And my, uh, who'd I miss? Oh. Okay, and my brother, who came from Ottawa, his wife. <laughs> who's been my uh, most serious uh, uh, supporter. And also I have in the family here from the Barton family and my sister's daughter, Natasha, she's here as well. I think when you start naming people, then you're gonna miss somebody. So I just will stop at that. Oh, Winston Manuel, I can do that because I'll hear about this later on. So, <laughs> so I want to say that I, I appreciate um, the honor. I respect what it means. And I will try my best to follow the guidelines that are required of me to follow. Thank you very much. I'm going to ask Maddie Neatson and Chloe Dion to come back up to the stage. Oh, they're behind. <laughs> I have a little bit more instructions now to provide to the audience, but before I do that, there are a number of parts of the convocation ceremony that we do every convocation. We're on our 16th convocation and Maddie and Chloe have been singing O Canada at every single one of those convocations. And you will discover shortly that they are spectacular, but once they sing, it's the signal that we're all about to leave. And so I don't get a chance to do a proper tribute and thank you to them at any particular point in time. And since they're graduating with you today, it seems like the right day to do it. So thank you. All right, graduates, the ceremony is coming to a close. At the end of the ceremony, as you leave the auditorium, you'll find someone from our Alumni Association there with a pin for you, a Dalhousie pin. I hope that you wear it with pride and that when you look at it, you remember the love we had and shared with you today. We're now gonna participate in the singing of O Canada. I will ask everyone to please rise. When we're finished, the platform party will leave the auditorium and we'll look forward to celebrating outside those doors with you. Oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all of us command, car ton bras 
s'est porté l'épée, il s'est porté la croix. Ton histoire est une épopée des plus brillants exploits. God keep our land glorious and free. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Oh, Canada, we stand on guard for Let me dead in my neck, stand down the old old thing. Here I'm at the old Maui Danet. Let me dead in my neck, stand where the big soul thing. Here I'm at the Don't wear a big soul thing. Make a 
Hey, oh, hey, hi, 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 hi,